Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where today we're going to have a look at building demos. So it's one of those things that's always kind of hard to get started with. If Databooks roll out a new feature and you're looking at something like Autoloader and you're like, right, okay, I need to try out Autoloader. Uh, how do I try out Autoloader? And you can scrounge around on the internet and try and find some notebooks or a video or something, videos, and grab it and pull it down and then have a play. But it's always... There's always this barrier to entry. You have to kind of just cobble together something that kind of works. Now, there's a chap called Quentin who's working at Databricks uh, who wanted to solve that problem. He put together uh, a thing called DB Demos. So DB Demos is like a, a self-contained packaged way of just going, can I get a demo on Delta Live Tables or this kind of thing in Unity Catalog or a particular solution accelerator? And it will install itself and unpack itself and deploy just the things that you need already pre-configured with a cluster, with notebooks, with whatever components it needs, directly into your Databricks workspace environment. For me, being a, a child of the 80s, I spent a lot of time in the 90s playing Command & Conquer, and it kind of reminds me of that kind of moving base. It just sits down and you go, right, deploy here, and it just starts unpacking itself and building things around itself. That's, it just pleasantly makes me giggle and think of a, a movable self-deploying base in Command & Conquer. Cool. So. We're going to have a look at that. I'm just going to show you kind of how you get started with it, how it works. We'll install a couple of the demos and just see your actions of deploying all that various bits of code. And yeah, all the good stuff that's uh, all baked in there. If it's your first time around, don't forget to like and subscribe. And obviously, let me know down in the comments if you're looking at this and you go, oh, there'd be a great demo if we saw one of... I am very sure Quentin and the team in Daily Rich would love to know whatever you guys are actually working on or would like to see uh, baked into it. So... Let's go have a look. So initially, a lot of the links will send you here. So there is just a, a GitHub repo. It's got all the things in there for all the different kind of uh, demos that are there. But really easily, the way it works is you install it from pip. So it's been deployed to PyPy. You can just pip install it. It'll go find the latest version of DB demos. You can do that inside your Databricks session just in a notebook and just work with it there. So, and then, you know, you can go and list demos and we'll go through all the commands and things that you can do. So you can, there are, there is information here about how you would go about building out your own demos and adding things in there and doing all of that kind of stuff. We're not going to talk about any of that. I'm assuming you go leave that to Databricks and just go and ask them for new things to be added in and they'll take care of all of that. But there is a load of information, which is actually just really good context for how you go about building your own self-deploying demo environment. So if you're looking to replicate this, but do your own version, there's a lot of really good just info in here about how you go about thinking about that and how that all fits together. So yeah, probably wouldn't start here. I'd start with dbdemos.ai. It's actually a much flashier, much nicer uh, website that's got everything that's baked in. So same quick start, just pip install the thing. Open up Databricks, pip install dbdemos, and then you can have a look at installing demos. You can see all the different demos that are there. You can see all the different Lake Housey uh, demos that are already done. Some of them being fairly um, solution accelerated. They're trying to solve a particular problem. So fraud detection and retail banking, credit decisioning, predictive maintenance, that kind of thing. Some of them are based around features. So advanced Spark streaming. We've got ones for autoloader. We've got how do you use Delta Live tables? How do you use Dolly? Uh, how do you use data warehousing with various different things like that? So loads of different facets of Databricks, whether it's patterns and processes, whether it's uh, specific features, whether it's solving a common problem in industry, uh, there's a lot of these baked in as demos. So certainly uh, just have a look through there and see if there's anything you're like, oh, actually, we've been trying to do that and we didn't quite know where to get started. There's loads in there. So go and take a bit of a peek. But let's let's go and use it, right? So I have here nothing on my sleeves. Uh, I've got a Databricks workspace. It's Unity Catalog enabled. Uh, it's what I've been doing various different UC demos on recently. And I've got a cluster turned on. So I've just created a new workbook. Um, I've associated it with a cluster and we can just go there. So I could just install the DB demos wheel entirely on the cluster. Uh, most of the time you do it as a session scoped one because you don't want to permanently install it. You're not permanently going to be running this as a demo environment. So I tend to um, do it as a session install, get it in. There we go. We can see that is now been updated, been uh, installed, and we can now go and have a play with DB demos. So let's do that. DB demos help. 
And that'll show me the various different commands that I've got. So I can I can use this command that I've just ran. I can list the demos and I can filter for a certain category. So we've got these various different category tags that you can see on the demos. So we can filter using those just to get a subset if we're looking for certain things. Uh, we can install a demo. And that's the primary thing we're going to use to actually deploy the notebooks and clusters and jobs and all the other things uh, that are part of this uh, solution. And we can do some configuration. We can send it to a certain path. We can send it for a certain person, certain usernames, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can create a cluster. So if you want to create a cluster specifically for something to take a look at the cluster it's going to build, uh, you can run that. And you can just go install everything. Build me an entire demo environment and fill it full of all, full of all the things. Wouldn't necessarily advise that. I'd say just install the demos that you're actually after. But it's generally how it works in a nutshell. There's not too much to it, really. So let's do that. Let's go and list the demos, and we'll see very similar to the other list that we had. Here's all the different things that we want. So we'll do. We'll open a quick Delta sharing one. We'll look at the Delta sharing airlines. Uh, we could do Unity catalogs. This is UC enabled. We can do autoloader. We'll, we'll we'll have a look. Let's go and run a particular one. And it is literally that is the code you need to run. So find the one that you want to run. Copy the code and then just run it in another cell. So in this case, we go down here, we're gonna dbdemos.install, and then that Delta sharing airlines. So this is gonna deploy a load of stuff. There we go, nice, happy. So it's deployed a notebook and it's spun up a cluster. So that has created a new cluster in my name and deployed that within my workspace. Uh, and then it's installed a load of essentially notebooks for me to work through that's going to tell the story about how the, this feature works, how the technology works, how to use this data. So if I switch around, I've got in compute, I can now see there's a new cluster that's been installed. Now, actually, I've just run out of uh, CPUs in this thing, so none of the clusters are going to be able to start, but that's fine, we don't need that. But you can see it has created a cluster as part of this deployment. Again, it just assumes that you don't have anything. It assumes it's being deployed into an entirely blank workspace so it configures the right cluster so that it knows it's compatible with the rest of the demo. Then outside of it, in my workspace, see, I've now got that Delta sharing airline. So it's created a new folder in my workspace. I didn't give it another path to go and install it to, so it's gone default. Uh, it's got a load of notebooks it's put in there, and it's got a load of resources, which is the additional stuff it uses to create it, the license, all of that stuff. So if we just open up one of our notebooks. We can see... This is kind of just a bit of a guide and it is meant to be like a real nice storytelling kind of experience. So you can see actually a load of slides baked into the markdown to go and understand uh, how that all works and you know, kind of how we should be thinking about this. We then got guides sending us to some of the other notebooks. So I can go into uh, the one as a receiver one. I could just click on the link. I could go and navigate it. There we go. So we've got this Delta uh, the sharing as a provider. So I'm giving someone else data under Delta sharing. You can go and have a look through. So it's basically got a load of code to run. So I should run this and I'll set the code up and I'll actually sort of set everything up so it does it. But also it has been run previously. So if I didn't have my, my cluster wouldn't start, for example, I can just have a look at the results and I can see what it should look like and I can grab bits of code that's being used in there. But sort of very, really, it's the thing I like is that they're very visual. So there's lots of good documentation about this is how this piece works. Think of it like this. Very, very well documented. We can step through all these different things. It's creating a catalog for me. It's telling us what's what's going on. You can see it was Quentin who then went and actually sort of uh, ran this one. You can see these different steps just taking us through that story about how this code's being built up, how you should think about these different steps. Again, loads of stuff that's just really good for sharing with people that you're trying to teach how this stuff works. It's, again, really, really good. Um, just Just a great demo. It's the point. It's good demos. Uh, so you can see loads of little stuff in there. And we can see all these different things. So even if you didn't have anything to set up, you can go and actually see what's happened in the last time it ran and how that all works. So yeah, that's a fairly you know straightforward one. So that created me a load of notebooks and it created me a, um, a cluster. But if we do something a little bit more involved, we can do a Delta Live Tables one. So DLT loans, that's a Delta Live Tables demo. So somewhere in here, they get that full Delta Live Table pipeline. Uh, it's full loans. And again, we're going to install it by that DLT loan. So we'll do the same thing. Now, 
This workspace is in UK South, so it's going to try and install a serverless uh, Databricks SQL workspace, and it's going to say, no, that's not going to work. Um, and it'll try and create a Delta Live table for me. So we're going to have a bunch of things created here. So a notebook, some Databricks SQL objects, some SQL queries, and a dashboard that sits over the top. Uh, we're going to see the Delta Live table itself and a job that wraps around it, plus all the notebooks that actually need to run it. You know, lots and lots of things in there uh, being run through. So it has created the cluster for me, which again won't start in my, my little demo environment. So we can see this again telling the story of how it works. And this is all built in saying it should look like this. By the way, it's currently running. You can go and have a look at what it looks like as it runs through. And kind of just teaching you how all this stuff works. This is teaching a little bit about, you know, the medallion architecture, bronze, silver, gold, how you should think about that, what it's doing at each step, what the queries are in each step. Again, I like it because it's showing you that you can comment your code and you can make a really nice, easy to follow data like process uh, inside your notebooks and the people should do this more. So yeah, no, just nice to see. So we've got the various different bits in the workspace. Again, that's deployed some things for me. So I've got the DLT loans, the core kind of Delta live table part of it with the kind of uh, the various notebooks in there. It's also done some dashboards for me. So that's converted to the separate area. I've got some SQL queries, which is running some queries on it. And I've also got a dashboard, which is going to go and create things, which again, isn't going to run, but you can see it has deployed all of these objects all together. Going to go and stop that before it even tries to uh, fail starting. Uh, if I switch over to Delta Live tables, you can see I've got a DLT pipeline. Let's stop that running. I can run in. So it had deployed it and automatically triggered everything, automatically set everything going. So it's very much just a, just run this demo. Gets all the artifacts, does all the structuring, does all the linking together, does all the cluster building, starts everything. Just says, go, run, finish end to end. I want to be able to go and see what this looks like. So you can see it's got my Delta Live table built and deployed. It's got the various notebooks hooked up, pointing into this Delta Live table. It's even, if I go over to workflows, you can see it's made a job for me pointing at that Delta Live table, triggering that thing. So it's all hooked up, all a kind of coherent story about how all this stuff actually fits together. Generally made to make it really easy for people to learn how to use Databricks kind of on the fly, for a new feature to come out and then them to add it into this DB demos and you to go and understand how it works. I kind of understand that, you know, a lot of people are looking at this going, well, this is great for consultants. What if I'm not a consultant? But I'm pretty sure if I was, when I was first starting to learn Autoloader, there wasn't a lot of documentation around on it. But being able to go, well, actually just DB demos, install Autoloader. I want to have a look at how it works and have a bit of a guided step-by-step -step process about this is how you should think about using Autoloader. That would have saved me weeks and weeks and weeks of figuring out how things actually work. So just from someone like developing your own things and building things, super, super useful. And also, yeah, as a way of thinking about how you can just share code in a way that is like self-deploying, self-packaged, almost like a building a little kind of um, executable installation application and then sharing now back in app dev days. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff in there. And that is all I wanted to go through to uh, today. Just essentially pointing you and going, look, this thing is around, is open source, you can go and use it. Um, it's called dbdemos.ai. Go and have a look at the website. I'll put a link to it down in the link below. And yeah, go and have a look because they put a lot of work making it actually quite slick, quite nice end to end, a good learning experience, a good demoing experience. If you are trying to get buy-in from other external stakeholders, if you are working with clients, then yeah, loads of stuff in. Go and have a look. And yeah, that is all I want to go through today. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you with the next one. Cheers.